Good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to the World Economic Forum in Davos 2018, and here to our press conference on ocean action. 2018 is going to be a very, very important year for the ocean agenda. Um, and you can see that probably by looking at the esteemed panel that we have lined up here to talk about this. It's going to be important for a number of reasons, not least because there was an incredible springboard from 2017 when the first UN conference on the ocean took place, which created over 1,400 commitments for ocean action from governments, public sector, civil society, and others. And this has inspired a range of very important agendas moving from 2018 through 2020 in line with the sustainable development goal for the ocean. And we're going to hear more about that on this panel because here in Davos, January 2018, we're going to hear some announcements about launching some of those action tracks. My name is Dominic Warre. I'm the head of public-private partnership here at the World Economic Forum. And we are the international organization for bringing the public and private and civil society together. And I would suggest to you that what you will hear from this panel is a remarkable moment in an agenda of a global commons issue which is so pressing and so important for life on earth. And you'll, you'll, you'll witness the coming together of the governmental community, the international organizations, civil society, and the private sector into a unified complementary agenda to deliver solutions to save life in the ocean. So with that, um, and with no need for any more introduction from me, let's get into the uh, uh, discussions. I'm delighted um, to first of all introduce to you Ernest Solberg, who as you all well know is the Prime Minister of Norway and one of the champion countries on many of the environmental issues um, across all sorts of aspects of the agenda. And we are very grateful to you on behalf of the international community for all the fantastic work and support that Norway provides and also your personal leadership on these issues. But oceans, yes. interesting. And um, Prime Minister, tell us more. Yes, well, Norway has a long history connected to the ocean. In fact, Norway is a totally ocean-based society. Most of our incomes come from the ocean. Our history comes from the ocean. Uh, Norway, is, as is a name, is in fact the name of the long coastline from the Atlantic to the Barents Sea, the way to the north, Norway. So it's... Um, we are a nation living of shipping, offshore oil and gas fisheries, aquaculture. We have long experience in managing uh, marine uh, ecosystems. We have tough environmental standards. And uh, research-based knowledge and technological development are key, important to us in the development of our society. What we know now is that the global population is growing. It means that the world will need more resources and services also from the ocean such as food, medicine, energy, minerals, and transport routes. There's a need for sustainable growth in the world's ocean industry to ensure jobs, to ensure income, to ensure a social development. There has been several good ocean initiatives um, that have been launched in recent years. However, I think there's a need to bring the link between ocean economy and sustainable development more than before. I have therefore taken the initiative to establish an international high-level panel on building a sustainable ocean economy. The objective is to increase international understanding on how sustainable use of oceans and the ocean economy can play a key role in meeting the world's most vital needs in the years to come. The ambition is to make a significant contribution to achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals, Goal 14, Life at Sea. And I have invited a number of uh, my colleagues from other coastal states from various parts of the world to participate in the panel. And President Raymond Gu from Polo and Prime Minister Costa of Portugal has already on board. And we are discussing with several other countries around the world to make sure that this is a representative high-level panel. And it will work closely with the UN and the UN Special Envoy for the Ocean, uh, Mr. Thompson. And I hopefully it will complement other UN initiatives on the oceans. We will get advice and input from representatives from the ocean industries, from civil society, and from research societies. And a group of experts will provide scientific pro uh, reports to the panel. And this will form the basis for the type of work that the panel will do. 
and the Our Ocean Conference in, in Norway in 2019 will be an important milestone for the panel. And all that will also a second UN conference on the oceans in 2020 be. We ha have the ambition that the high level panel will present its final report in 2020. And it's crucial that coastal and, uh, coastal and maritime uh, countries work together to highlight both the huge potential to be found in building a sustainable ocean economy, but also to make sure that we understand that how we are using the oceans is part of the problem today. So we need to make sure that our work is uh, sustainable. And uh, my intention is that this is going to be an open, transparent work, encourage debate from far beyond the panel itself. Uh, and there is a need for global um, political dialogue on how we manage to ensure both healthy and rich oceans for the future. There is a fact that the uh, oceans have more secrets that we don't know about yet when it comes to resources and the life beneath the waters. It's a possibility area, but it's also one of the most challenged areas we have in the world for sustainability in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. And what fantastic news, the launch of an international panel on oceans. And as you say, the link to the sustainable development in the, in the economy. Um, it was so interesting when you said that in terms of bringing together not only leaders from government, but you also intonated to draw upon aspects of business and civil society and NGOs. And that, I think, brings us to our next um, panelist, who, of course, as you well know, is the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, Isabella Löfven, um, and who was one of the co-presidents of the 2017 Ocean Action Conference that uh, the United Nations held. Um, Deputy Prime Minister, from your perspective, um, what do you see coming up in the year ahead, and what are you excited about? Well, um, I'm... I mean, my feelings are, are on both sides. I'm both excited and I'm also very uh, worried about the situation in our oceans. And last year's uh, UN conference uh, held in New York at the UN headquarters was the biggest uh, ocean conference ever held. And that was really encouraging, and that really brings hope to the, to, to the world, because we had so many global leaders there, and uh, the, the commitments made at the UN conference were more, they exceeded our expectations. There were 1,400 uh, voluntary commitments made at the conference by states, but also by organizations and, uh, and the private sector and, and enterprises. And uh, even some, uh, some uh, ordinary citizens made uh, commitments. And this is what we need now if we're going to have the slightest chance of sustainable oceans by 2030. And in fact, we have some of the goals set under the SDG 14 on oceans uh, should be already uh, delivered by 2020. So we should end overfishing by 2020. We should establish 10% of the oceans as marine protected areas in one form or another by 2020. Uh, so these uh, challenges are so huge that we see that we really need to catalyze and mobilize the, the whole global community now. And uh, not only states can do this by themselves, but we need science on board, we need the civil society on board, but not least we need also finance and we need the, uh, the private sector and the enterprises being on board. <clears throat> and, and that's why I'm, I'm so uh, glad and honored that I will be co-chairing uh, a group of Friends of Ocean Action uh, together with uh, the special representative of the oceans of the Secretary General, uh, Peter Thompson. And we are bringing together 40 uh, leaders uh, from different sectors that can uh, help catalyze and uh, get the work done that we need to get done uh, by 2020, uh, when the next Oceans Conference will, will be held in, in Portugal. Of course, there will be other uh, conferences as well. We need them because we also need to uh, get more action uh, when it comes to, to, um, to saving our oceans. And I think most of you have heard uh, about the trends, what's going on now is with the overfishing, with plastic pollution and acidification of our oceans. We're, we're seeing a dying ocean that will have more plastic than fish by 2050. And this is of course something 
which is totally unacceptable. Uh, we have the resources, we have the knowledge, we can develop the technology where we can prevent this from happening. And this is what this uh, Friends of Ocean Action is about, to help uh, create new partnerships and uh, push the right buttons and see that this will actually uh, be prevented. Um, and uh, so the next uh, three years up until 20 <coughs> 2020, uh, this uh, group of Friends of Ocean Action will will be established and will be working very, very hard uh, to, to make sure that the SDG 14 will be a success. And this is in fact something uh, uh, quite unique because this is the first SDG that has really got this great movement going uh, uh, as uh, quickly and as early on in, in the process. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. You said something very, very interesting there. The Friends of Ocean Action, a multi-stakeholder movement, a mobilization of effort to complement and support uh, the governments and the international organizations of this world. And then you mentioned how quickly an effort has taken place to mobilize on this particular sustainable development goal, perhaps because of the pressing nature of the challenge that governments, civil society, businesses can see. That's exciting. That sounds like a sprint, almost. Uh, to 2020 to get real action on some of the targets. As you mentioned, I think that uh, several of the SDG targets for oceans are actually supposed to be delivered by 2020. Um, that's a, a very good chance to bring in our, our next uh, panelist. I'm delighted to welcome um, the founder and, and chairman of Salesforce.com, Mark Benioff. I mean, you must know all about kind of sprints and innovation and getting things done. Um, and you're also a, a well-known champion of the ocean agenda, um, sponsoring and supporting many things with your um, wife, Lynn Benioff, and other initiatives, such as the Ocean um, Benioff Ocean Initiative at uh, Santa Barbara University in California. Um, does this sound exciting to you? Are there things that you can get behind? Are there any kind of messages you'd like to give um, the group in this room and those watching? Yes, well, thank you very much, Dominic, and thank you especially for your leadership at the World Economic Forum. I'm Mark Benioff. I'm the chairman and CEO of Salesforce. Uh, we're a San Francisco-based technology company, the largest uh, uh, enterprise cloud computing company and also the largest uh, technology employer in San Francisco. Uh, I'm also a trustee of the World Economic Forum. I'm also chairman of the World Economic Forum's Fourth Industrial Revolution Center in San Francisco. Um, I think that uh, for those of us who have been coming to the World Economic Forum uh, for a number of years, we realize that uh, having these multi-stakeholder dialogues uh, is an incredibly powerful experience and can indeed raise consciousness and find solutions to problems and we see that over and over again. I've been coming here since 2002. Um, I um, uh, also am extremely interested in the oceans. That's my intersection here and I live on the ocean uh, in San Francisco and uh, I also live on the ocean in Hawaii and I realize and I can see it every day how the oceans are changing. Uh, you can see it in the acidification, you can see it in plastics, uh, you can see it in overfishing, and you can see it in many of the other areas that have been so well articulated uh, by this uh, group. Um, but what I've been interested in uh, is ways to bring people together to go after this um, important uh, idea that we can bring greater health to the oceans. And uh, specifically for the last several years now, we have been bringing ocean content uh, through funding that I've supplied and others, uh, including some great uh, f ocean foundations that we work with, um, here to the World Economic Forum, here in uh, Davos, as well as in Dayan, in Taijan, uh, in China, and other key uh, places around the world. This has created a greater multi-stakeholder multi dialogue, and that's when I realized, especially in conversations with Dominic, that we can take this to a higher level we can go to a greater place with the World Economic Forum actually as a convening body to work with great international organizations like the UN and the tremendous work that they are doing and others including nonprofits, other NGOs, educational institutions and so um, I've agreed to supply an additional four and a half million dollars to uh, give Dominic and his team and the teams of the World Economic Forum the capabilities to go ahead and amplify what we are doing here. Traditionally, the WEF has been about economic issues since 
Hence the, the name of the, uh, the conference. Um, but this is so much bigger than economic. And I think we all realize, uh, especially those of us who are here with all these great government officials and, and, and NGOs and so forth, that we can take a major initiative like number 14 here, the SDG, to make our oceans healthy again uh, and do that. And, and specifically, let me speak from on the side of the technology industry for just one moment. You look at some huge changes and transformations going on in the technology industry, like artificial intelligence and robotics, or even advancements in biotechnologies, like CRISPR and others. We call here at WEF the fourth industrial revolution. You take those technologies, you apply that with this convening body, and you also connect that back to this incredible issue that we're dealing with the oceans. This is a great time to focus on this. We can really do something. We can make action happen, we can make change happen. We have the leadership, the vision, and the funding. And uh, everyone up here, as well as through the entire World Economic Forum uh, community is committed uh, to working on oceans, and I couldn't be uh, more excited. So thank you, Dominic, especially for your leadership and uh, for many others, including Klaus Schwab, our founder, who has so strongly embraced uh, uh, this capability. And I, I'm delighted that uh, I couldn't be more excited that we're all up here talking about this. Mark, thank you, and thank you very much as well for the leadership that, that you're showing. Suddenly, this um, Sustainable Development Goal Action on the Ocean is taking on a new angle. We're hearing about technology and innovation, um, and San Francisco and the West Coast meeting kind of classic challenges, whether in the North or the South. I mean, for those um, Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister who inspired the Sustainable Development Goals and sought partnerships in Goal 17, this must be the sorts of thing that you were hoping would kind of brew and explode and try to take on these challenges. So it sounds pretty exciting. Um, Peter Thompson, uh, you've been referenced throughout this panel and now is the time to, to bring you in. You are the United Nations Secretary General Special Envoy for the Ocean. Um, no pressure down the end of the panel, but everyone is referring to you and the leadership that you're creating and the imprimatur that you're providing across governments and business and civil society to instill this movement in the world and to deliver um, on the goals and targets of that SDG. Uh, how are you feeling about where the agenda is at and what are your thoughts about the year ahead? Thanks, Dominic. Uh, first of all, can I just thank the three speakers who've uh, preceded me, uh, Prime Minister of Norway uh, in setting up this high level panel is uh, doing us a great service in, in the area of the sustainable blue economy in particular. This is an area of deep interest to developing countries as well as uh, developed uh, countries in the north. And uh, the work that this high level panel will be doing, uh, heads of government level, uh, let's remember, um, will result in, in a report which uh, will grow over the next three years, as I understand it, uh, at various way stations. We'll be discussing it uh, internationally but uh, will end up in the, uh, th what is expected to be the second UN uh, Ocean Conference in 2020. So it's a great initiative and I really applaud the Prime Minister uh, for that and while I'm speaking about that on behalf of the United Nations, I really want to thank her for the many years of service that she's given in, in leadership for the Sustainable Development Goals. I mean, this cannot be understated. The, the Sustainable Development Goals are humanity's recipe for saving our species on this planet. Either we implement them or we place our children and uh, grandchildren in jeopardy. So thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, to Isabella Lovin, who was uh, co uh, Sweden and Fiji were the co-presidents of the Ocean Conference. I mean, Fiji could not have had a more stalwart ally than Sweden in pushing uh, for the conference. We had to fight to get it. And having got it, uh, to make it as, as meaningful as it was, uh, you know, I can't say enough in praise of the government of Sweden and, in, and Isabella Lovin in particular for making all that happen. Uh, I do believe that the June 2017 was the turning point in terms of global consciousness and global, uh, the need for global action in the face of ocean change. Uh, and to Mark, uh, you know, that generosity, your ever enthusiastic attitude on, on ocean action is so deeply appreciated. This is just one more chapter in uh, the work that you've done for the ocean. So I'm, uh, on behalf of the ocean, I really want to thank you uh, for making this possible because what it does make possible is for WEF uh, to assemble a group of experts. Uh, I'll be working, my office in Paris will be working with uh, that group of experts uh, and uh, with WRI 
uh, and assembling really the best of knowledge that we can to support both the high-level panel's work and, of course, the Friends of Ocean Action's work over the next three years. This is all project-bound towards 2020. Uh, we're in the years of implementation now, so we want to hold ourselves accountable in 2020. We want to be able to, at that second UN conference, assess our successes and our failures, because we'll then have 10 years left of SDG 14 uh, to uh, save the ocean, and we, we need to adjust in 2020. Uh, look, we do have a plan to save the ocean. It's called SDG 14. If you haven't seen the 10 targets, please familiarize yourself with them. I, I firmly believe that uh, while, yes, the ocean is in a cycle of decline, I firmly believe that with SDG 14, we have the necessary plan taken in combination with the Paris Climate Agreement to save the ocean and hand over to our grandchildren an ocean uh, that is not dead or just full of slimy things. Uh, the, uh, there are very good things happening now. Since June, there's been this flowering of, of ocean action, and you've seen uh, examples up here from the three previous speakers of exactly that. Uh, but bear in mind that last December, the United Nations, two very important steps were taken. One was the uh, announcing of the marine uh, of the, sorry, the international decade for ocean science for sustainable development. That is uh, going to be from 2021 to 2030, when we expect unprecedented attention to be given to ocean science and research and technology transfer. And um, that is so necessary because we know more about the face of Mars and the face of the moon than we do about what's uh, down at the bottom of our ocean. The second really important thing was that finally there was consensus and agreement on the fact that we would have an uh, international conference on what is called BBNJ. You're going to see that word a lot over the next couple of years. BBNJ stands for Marine Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdictions. And this is, you know, you've, you've seen reference to sort of piracy at the high seas. Uh, well, it's true. We don't have much law covering what happens outside national jurisdictions. So the, these BBNJ conferences are going to be extremely important to saving the integrity of the ocean, and uh, they will result in international law, which will be subsumed into UNCLOS. So uh, good things are happening, uh, and I could list a whole bunch more of them, but I won't because uh, the purpose of uh, today's meeting really is to uh, let you know about these three great initiatives that you've just heard about. And I really look forward to working with both the high-level panel and uh, with um, the Friends of Ocean Action and with uh, WEF in making them uh, do what they're designed to do, which is implement SDG 14. Thank you. Thank you, Special Envoy. Um, so we have uh, a few minutes for, for questions. I know, um, Mr. Benioff, that uh, your time might be pressed, so if you are needing to go, then um, we won't be perturbed if you walk off. It won't be because of a bad question or, or a bad answer, I'm <laughs> sure. <might> be. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, if anybody um, from the audience would like to ask a question, yes. Tell us who you are. Helena Humphrey, Deutsche Welle News, um, Berlin. We know that oil spills, um, plastic pollution, air pollution deal really heavy blows um, to the ocean. And we also then know uh, that the US president's climate policy um, is a significant blow as well. Um, to your campaign and also bearing in mind um, that the United States voted against a UN resolution on plastic waste last year. How much then of a blow is that to your campaign and the things you're trying to achieve here? And if I could put that to Prime Minister Solbo, please. Mm. Well, I, the reason why we are launching a high-level panel is to show the interlinkage between the oceans, the economy, and how many jobs that is connected to it, and how important it is uh, to deal with these pollution uh, problems to deal with how make sure that the water is safe, but also to see how we can explore in a sustainable way. And I believe in the argument of economy and jobs. I believe that showing that sustainability and jobs goes hand in hand is uh, is the future. That means that we have to do something about the plastic because we will not be able to have fish and they will not there will be not be jobs in the fisheries. There will not be fishermen. There will be a lot of different things that is happening if we are ending up eating plastic instead of fish. Fish is a very healthy protein. It will not be healthy if it's plastic. So it's, uh, I think uh, that's one of the reasons, because we need to, to show this argument together and see the economy of it. 
uh, that, that cleaning up the oceans has a good economy for, for jobs and creation in the future. And I still believe that uh, jobs and economy is a good argument also to meet the American president and the current administration with. Um, yeah, can I also say, you know, having lived in uh, New York for the last seven years, um, that uh, one observes that uh, in terms of climate action and ocean action, uh, the ideas, the, philanthrop uh, the philanthropies, the, the resources, the commitment from cities, from companies, from people, is one of the strongest in the world. Whatever, you know, current governments may say, uh, the American people, uh, uh, one of the strongest supporters of climate action and ocean action. And I have witnessed that, and I think all the polls show it in America as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. Um, it looks like we have an audience who are waiting to come back next year and seeing what has been delivered from the international panel that was launched and the mobilization of effort with the Friends of Ocean Action. Um, so on behalf of the World Economic Forum here at uh, Davos in 2018, may I thank once again our panelists, the Prime Minister of Norway, the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, um, the Chairman, CEO, Founder of Salesforce.com, and the United Nations Secretary General, Special Envoy for the Ocean. See you in 12 months, and this group will report on how we have got on. Um, wish you a very good afternoon. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.